Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome back, my friends, again to the voice of the eternal gospel. I am Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this new time to study your word. Thank you for each one that is tuned in. Please give us all a blessing. Send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we were talking off the air that we maybe for this program uh, will uh, continue or talk a little more, uh, bring another aspect on this, on Revelation 15, 5. Uh, can you read it, Brother Patrick? So we can move on with yes. this and after, topic. And after that, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open, Revelation 15, 5. Okay. So, so far we have been mentioning it was open. Uh, when Christ died and went to heaven. That was, Remember Stephen? That was in chapter 4 when he ascended to the holy place. Right. And, and Stephen saw Jesus on the tabernacle. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He was being stoned in the book of Acts. We find this. Mm -hmm. But it was opened again in 1844. Yes. Another place. And let's pick up from there. Now, in Revelation chapter 15, verse 5, mm -hmm. we're looking at the tabernacle being opened again in the context of seven last plagues mm -hmm. about to be poured out. Mm -hmm. The plagues cannot be poured out while, the, while Christ is your high priest right. interceding on our behalf. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, listen carefully, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Look here with me, Hebrews 4, 16 through uh, 18. Let's see, 16, 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have an high pri a great high priest. Who is this great high priest that is passed into heavens? Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. While Christ is your high priest, grace and mercy is being offered. Amen. The Bible foretells a time when wrath of God will be poured out without mixture. Mm -hmm. That means there will be no high priest to stand between God, an offended God, and guilty men. <clears throat> Therefore, mercy is extended to men now. Mercy, the plan of salvation, is being given to you now. The gospel invitation is being invited to you now. Receive Christ. Get a clean heart. Receive a new heart. Have a new life in Christ. Learn that God has come not to destroy men's lives, but to save them and to bring them into harmony with himself so that they can have the res restoration of his image, his character in them, and be in harmony with his commandments. Amen. I, I, I mean, by the way, that's mm -hmm. the most fearful warning that we talk in other program um, of the third annual message. Yes. You know, the, the, the wrath of God right. will come upon those who will receive the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, the mark of the beast, and so on. So, Brother Patrick, you have something to say there. Um, so, the, in verse 5, this test, this opening of the, really the most holy place, mm -hmm. again, in the heavenly sanctuary, is marking the finishing of yes. Christ's work of intercession. And when he finishes, in Revelation 22, verse 11, he says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. There comes a time when the Holy Spirit can't do anything more, and people have chosen for themselves their final decision, either to be remain uh, unrighteous and filthy, or to choose the righteousness of Christ and His holiness. Let me ask you a question to both of you. Mm -hmm. After that, after that, from what you just read, or quoted from the Bible, uh, could people, can anybody have like a second chance, so to speak, 
speak, so to speak, according to the Word of God. Okay, according to the Word of God, let me just make something clear. The question that must be answered is... Could I read the next verse? Read the verse. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Okay. All right, so I want to say one thing. Let's look at something like is, prob is the probationary period that Christ has allotted for the mankind through the plan of redemption for, the, for men to receive the gospel of Christ? We talked about in a previous program that that plan will come to an end. When that plan comes to an end, there is no second chances. Yeah. The only chance that men have to receive the gospel is right now. All right, but now let's prove something. Let's take a look at something. Will probation close? Will there come a time when mercy won't plead? Will there come a time when we can no longer, when will there be no high priest? Will there come a time when you pray and God won't answer your prayer, the heavens will be as brass and wrath will come and there will be no intercessor? Let's take a look at that. I, I want to go there for a minute because I want you to see it with me now. I want you to share it. Look at this with me for a moment because we need to, we need to, we really need to help people understand yeah. that this is a warning. The uh, Bible says the here, look warning, at Revelation 15. The final warning. Right. Let's go. Yes. Be, be, be because uh, so many people can argue, some people can argue, well, the, close, the door was closed in the time of Noah. Uh -huh. It closed, but look. We came back again. But we're repeating, we're repeating the history, but there's going to be a closed door this time, and there's no more mercy going to plead because God's going to cut, bring an end to the plan of redemption. Even Noah's time, there was a time of God trying to restore men mm -hmm. who would believe and accept him. Mm -hmm. And he tried to keep his people separate from the world. Okay. Even then, the same pleading has been going on now. And but we're coming down to the end of time, yep. meaning the time that's been allotted for this world to receive the gospel. Okay. We're come to we're coming to an end of that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, amen. Okay. Listen to Revelation 15, 8. And the temple of God, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. Mm -hmm. Now notice the temple was filled with what? Smoke. Or the sanctuary. What part of the sanctuary was filled with smoke? Mm -hmm. This is talking about the most holy place. Right. So where, where Jesus had been the high priest. With his censer. Where, where he had the censer. Mm. Now it says it was smoke was from the glory of God and from his power. Mm. Smoke also represents a cloud. Mm. Listen very carefully. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10. Can you read that for me? Okay. 1 Kings? 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10. Uh, okay, Brother Patrick, go ahead. It says, It came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord mm -hmm. so that the priest could not stand to minister mm -hmm. because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Notice it said, for the, because of the cloud or because of the smoke, for the glory of the Lord had filled the what? House yeah. of the Lord. Isn't that what we just read over in Revelation or, 15? Or the yeah. temple, yeah. Filled the temple or the house of God, right? Mm -hmm. Or the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 40, verse 34 and 35. 40. Exodus 40, verses 34 and 35. That's the same thing. Never have, but, it's, but it's dealing with Moses. Okay? Then, a cloud, again. then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the mm. congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord did what? Filled the, filled the tabernacle to what point? That Moses could not what? Enter. enter. Now, the Bible says something about that in Revelation 15, 8, it says that no man could enter. Mm. How do men enter the sanctuary? How do men enter the sanctuary? By faith through Jesus, right? Because of the work that Jesus is doing in the most holy place now. You said by faith through Jesus? Right. Okay. Is that yeah, how we what, go? By our only mediator. All right. Because we are in the time of still probation, right? Right. Okay. I just want to know, I just want to know how do men enter? Go with me to Psalms. Mm -hmm. All right, Psalms, and uh, Patrick, you had something you wanted to say? No. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Psalms, um, and let's look at Psalm 65, I mean, yes, yeah, Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 65 too, to be sure. All right. The right one here. Be sure I gave the right one. I want to get the wrong text here for a minute. Okay. Psalm 65 too, yes. Right. The Bible says, O thou that hearest and what? Answer if what? Prayer. prayer. Prayers. Now wait a minute. Where does where where does our prayer go? First of all, go to Psalms one forty one two. 
Yeah. Psalms 141.2. All right, read that for me, somebody. That says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Now, our prayers go up as incense, mm. but where do they go to? They go up right now, they go up by faith into the what? Heavenly sanctuary. sanctuary yeah. All right? And it goes through the Jesus in the most holy place. So it's going through the golden censer where Christ is your high priest and my high priest. Amen. All right? So as a result of that, our high priest, it says, So all thou that hears and answer prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. So men enter the sanctuary by faith through prayer. Mm. Our prayers go up as incense. In fact, do our prayers really go up there? What does Revelation chapter 4 or 5 tell us, uh, uh, Patrick? What does is, what is, what is Revelation 4 and 5 tell us about the prayers of the saints? Um, verse 5, verse 8. Yeah, I believe that's the one I want. Revelation uh, 5, 8, where it talks about the prayers yeah. of the saints going up. It says, uh, oh, that's 8, verse 3 then. Okay, you got 8, 3, and you also, have, it says here, watch carefully, yes. In Revelation 8, 3, can you read that for us? And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Okay. That's the altar of incense, the okay. anti-typical one in the okay. heavenly sanctuary. And, and, but the, but the, the prayers are... Verse 4. But I want you to notice, the prayers are going up and the, this, as what incense, but they're being offered as well. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Mm. Yes. Wow. Uh, okay, now go again with me. That angel that there is representing Christ because no angel can intercede for us. Only Christ can be our intercessor. Mm -hmm. All right, go with me to uh, Revelation 5, and look here again, and look here for a moment. Uh, and uh, okay, can, before we go uh -huh. 5, can, can I ask a question? What is that incense, incense represented? Because it's it says, representing and the our smoke prayers. of the incense, which came with the prayers yes. of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Mm -hmm. So, the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers that, of the saints. Mm -hmm. That was something very special, mingled with the prayers yeah, of the saints. What is that? Could that be? I mentioned, you know, I said that's what the reason I said a few minutes ago is through, you know, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That, that's the only way, through faith in Jesus Christ. Because what I see in here is it is by the merit yeah. and the character the merit of Jesus Christ, the incense over here. It's not a literal smoke that you see in some of the churches, in some of the religious services. No, that's not what we're talking about. Because we already have been proving that the only tabernacle, the only priesthood now is the priesthood of Jesus above. So our prayers needs to go, uh, if I can use the word, mingling with the uh, merits of Jesus Christ. It's by his merit. I'm sorry. We'll be right back. I know. Watch this. Be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, Pastor Barry, um, let's go ahead and move on with this, yeah, uh, well, the incense, the yeah. prayers, mm -hmm. and because I know there is no doubt, all of us, including our viewers, wants our prayers to let's, reach out to yes, heaven. But, right? but our prayers, remember, Jesus told you in John 14, 6, mm -hmm. 
I am the I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Mm. Our prayers go up, go up as our prayers go up, but they go up to Christ, and Christ mingles His merits like incense with our prayer. Amen. And as a result, our prayers are brought before Him through His righteousness. Amen. It is made acceptable to God. Amen. It is not what we have. Is what he has done Amen. and what he works in us by us surrendering to him and work and give and yielding with whole hearts mm -hmm. is what is actually was actually gives us the merit that we have. Mm -hmm. For the Amen. Bible says in Philippians 2:13, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Amen. Okay? Amen. 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 And uh while you and, were and, and, and go ahead. I'm I, sorry. I, no, what I, I was saying is um, it, it, that, that is good news. And the problem is, because some people might say, okay, you see, I don't need to obey God. I don't need to be obedient because my prayers anyway, Jesus is going to take it up to the Heavenly Father and answer But that's our all, prayer. That, that's only a prayer of faith that meets the condition because faith and presumption are close together. Right, that, okay. Faith claims Please. God's word and meets the condition by which the word can be fulfilled. Amen. But presumption claims God's word and does not meet the conditions by which God's word should be fulfilled. Amen. And they lie close together. And a lot of people are praying presumptuously for things without actually coming and bringing their lives into harmony with God's will. With the gospel. With the gospel. A, 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 a second, a first of John, please. First of John, chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. First of John, chapter 2, and hereby verse 3 and 4. We do know him. That we and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. I'd like to I'd like to bring out Proverbs twenty eight nine because yeah. okay. a lot of people think God will hear their prayer. But if we're going to walk in disobedience and yeah. reject God's law yeah. or commandments, then we're not going to have His blessing. Listen to what the Bible says. In Proverbs 28, 9, he that turn away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. You see that? Now, the Bible says that prayers can become an abomination when we reject God's law. Or even if we're following our false precepts of laws, this is also can be an abomination. That's serious. And that's serious. Now, why is that important? Because when I asked earlier, how, does, uh, God does, the, how do men enter the temple? In the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 7, Listen to this, Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. Thy ho the way did the prayer go? The prayer went unto God in where his what? Holy temple. What holy temple is this? I thought Jesus was only a high priest in the New Testament. I thought he only had a sanctuary in the New Testament. What temple is this? This is the same temple that's been there, have been there forever. Hmm. Look, look book. what the Bible says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can say yes. that, yes, his prayers went into the temple because he has placed the faith on the Messiah on to the come. the Messiah to come. That's right. That's right. right? Absolutely. Today, yes. we, we don't place our faith on the Messiah to come, but in the time the Messiah that came is going to come back only to bring us back home. Now, did David mention a sanctuary in heaven? In his day, in Psalms chapter 68, verse 24, the Bible tells us again, they have seen thy goings, O God, even thy goings, it says, my, it says, my king in the sanctuary. There is a heavenly sanctuary. The Bible shows that David even shows that God's dwelling, his goings were in the where? Sanctuary. sanctuary yeah. And then in Psalms 102, uh, Eight, uh, 19, look again with me. Psalms 102. Look again with me again, and we'll see it one more time. So we can see it again. 102. And 102. Verse Psalms, 19. Psalms, verse 19, I believe it is, I want. Be sure I get you the right one. Psalms 102, 19 says, yeah. yes, for he has what? Look down where? From the high of his Sanctuary. Sanctuary. From heaven did he be did the Lord behold the earth. Mm -hmm. So how do men enter the sanctuary? Through prayer. Mm -hmm. 
But how is our prayers, what does our prayer mingle with? The merits of Christ's righteousness. And so we find then that but the Bible says that time will come when Jesus will not be our high priest. Mm. There will be no more mingling his merits with prayer okay. because there will be no more high priest. Mm. Now, is that possible? Is such a thing possible? Patrick read about Christ giving closing remarks of, of, of what will happen when he leaves the sanctuary. But is it possible that we can go, that there will come a time when there will be no high priest? The Bible said the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. No man can enter the temple. We found out that men can enter the temple only by prayer. But if that's only if you have a mediator or a high priest there, if Jesus is not the mediator, if Jesus is not the high priest, then we cannot enter the temple. Because there is nothing that we can do in our sinful condition that can merit ourselves with a holy God. Amen. Do you know the Bible, I and mean, what you just said, it's so truth. The Bible speaks of a time coming when people will try to reach yes. out to heaven, even praying yes. in agony, but they're not going to find it. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Please, my brother Patrick, 11 and 12. Okay. Read it, please. Behold, and the days 13. come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Keep reading. They shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. They, they, they will try to, the prophet Amos is, is describing a time when they will try desperately, trying to find, you know, uh, 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 to have the connection with heaven. They said, that will not come. Why won't it come? What, what, what will have happened? All right, we know that no man can enter the temple, right? Closed. We know the saint, there's a smoke fills the sanctuary. Right. But now there's something else that's going to be involved. Go with me to uh, Lamentations, chapter uh, 3. And let's read verses 42 to 44. Because remember, it said we talked about the fact no man can enter the temple. And we said that smoke represents a cloud. But Lamentations, uh. chapter 3, verses 42 to 44 tells us, it says here, we have transgressed and rebelled, and thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger hmm. and persecuted us. Thou hast slain, and thou hast not pitied. Hmm. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud hmm. that our prayers should not pass through. Wow. So when the heavenly sanctuary, when Jesus is no longer there, what's getting ready to happen? The sanctuary is going to be covered with a cloud and no one's prayers can pass through. And the only prayers that can even be heard are the ones where those who have, have their names retained in the book of life, mm -hmm. angels of God will be with them and, make, and, and, and adhere to their prayers. Now, but but there be no high priest. That's right. Now, by the way, verse 42 that you just read? Yes. Lamentation 3, 4, 41. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, 42. And, and 42, we 42, 44. We have transgressed and, mm -hmm. and have reveled. What is another word for transgress? That's right. violation of the law. It's just violation of God's law. That's right. I mean, it's over and over, new, all, all, a new testament, the word of God always brings the same truth that the violation of his commandments or obeying tradition instead of commandments of God is going to bring uh, this all. Uh, the, the, the most uh, tragic uh, event in the life of any human being will be to try to reach out to God and not being able to get the answer. And that time is at hand. That's what That's right. the book of Revelation is bringing to us. I want you to notice something else now. Because now David said he can't, our prayers cannot pass through. Mm -hmm. Go with me to uh, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. go, let's go to Isaiah now. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Isaiah. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 59, maybe? 59. Mm -hmm. okay. and let's look at verse 16 together. Why are our prayers being answered? Why is the temple filled with smoke? Mm -hmm. What has happened? Mm -hmm. First of all, smoke is also a symbol of not only that, but it's a symbol of God's anger. Mm -hmm. It shows that the wrath of God is about to be poured out and there is no high priest. There's no intercessor. Why? Let's see if that's true. There'll be no high priest. Look at the Bible, Isaiah 59, 16. In Isaiah 59, 16, can you read it for me, Patrick? And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. There was no what? Intercessor. What, what happened to Jesus? 
Jesus, in, what did Daniel 12.1 tell us? Go to Daniel 12.1. Why is there no intercessor? What happened? That's because at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Now, Michael here is not an angel, per se. It, this is dealing with one, Michael means one who is like God. It means one who is the express image of his person. He's the commander of the angels. Okay, well, yeah. who is the express image of God's person in the reality? That's Jesus Who is Christ. like God? Go me to Hebrews 1, 3, and let's read it. Yeah, and I want to come back to Isaiah 59, please. Yeah, okay, Isaiah okay. okay. Um, let's go back. Okay. Okay. Let's just pull this up, because Michael go is going to stand up, or Jesus is going to stand Jesus up. Jesus is the express image image of his person, meaning the Father. The outshining of his glory and express image of his person, mm -hmm. upholding all things by the word of his power. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 1, 3. Yeah. So Christ is this, Christ is actually Michael. I mean, one why, who is like God, like God the Father in character and purpose. Go but ahead. why that Michael or intercessor, the only intercessor, going to be no more, no more intercession. Uh, the same chapter, 59. Yeah. But verse 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. I was going to go there. Please, read it. You are, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are good verses. In there. So we can understand, because people might be saying, no, 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 that, that cannot be true. We're going to have the intercessor. These people are reading maybe a wrong Bible. But no, I invite you to read your own Bible at home, uh, even the Catholic Bible, like I have it. Go ahead. Verse 13. Yeah. Uh, no, 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. 59. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth falleth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. What do they do with the truth? The He's truth, what happened? Fallen in the street. Fallen in the streets. Yeah. Nobody wants... Even. Where did the truth should be falling? On hearts. On, hearts. On the hearts of men and women. Yes. I guess well, I, I'm sorry. We have to close for today. I promise we're going to keep going deeper and deeper into this study. Yeah. The truth was being preached, but it was fall people let it fall on the ground. Amen. Uh, I just want to, well, let, let me close with a thought. Let through the Holy Spirit all this beautiful truth to fall not on the ground, but on the heart of each one of us on this day. Next, until next time, same hour, same station. God bless you. Oh. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.